Hello, everyone. My guest today is Nanand Melanovic. He is an entrepreneur with 15 years of managerial experience in engineering and software development, the founder of Clockify, a time tracking software with over a million users worldwide. His company's uh, Coing develops software as a service solutions, but also is, it's, it has its own products as well as invests in technology startups. All right, Nanand, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. So, so let me just be clear. Coing, C-O-I-N-G, is that like an agency that holds all your SaaS projects? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, okay. that's the holding company. And Clockify.me is your biggest one? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, Clockify is currently the only uh, successful product that we have in pro- portfolio. Well, I'm, hmm, we should either talk about all the failures or we could just focus on the one success. I, let me just ask the ratio, then we'll focus on Clockify. How many ones failed versus this one success? Eight fail <laughs> to success. I love that. All right, let's talk about Clockify. What's the company do and how do you make money? Well, it's a, I mean, it's time tracking software, right? Pretty, uh, pretty known concept. And, uh, we make money by uh, charging subscription per workspace. It's 10 and 30 bucks a month in the cloud. And we also have a self-hosted enterprise edition that costs significantly more because, uh, each time we have, when we have a big customer, they have some special needs that we have to uh, customize. So, uh, so that's where we make 80% of our revenue. Interesting. So if you took it, if you looked at kind of what the average customer is paying you per month or per year on a logo basis, like the company basis, not a seat basis, but the company, what would that number be? So in the cloud, the average customer is $19, $19 so one nine per month. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when it, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to enterprise edition, that goes to significantly more. So, uh, so I'm not going to pull that one into, uh, into this average, so. But you said 80% of your revenue comes from the enterprise cohort, correct? Yeah, yeah. So what is the enterprise cohort? Let's just talk about that for a second. The enterprise cohort on average is paying about what per month? Well, it starts at 450. That's the minimum that you have to pay to uh, have your company use Clockify on your own server. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like I said, average average amount is a lot bigger than that, so. Okay, Um well, so I need I need a little help understanding this so I can frame my questions, right? You're either selling $19 per month plans to SMBs or you're selling $450 per month kind of on their own server plans or you're yeah. selling something way more expensive than that to much, much bigger enterprises. Which one is it? Well, I mean, your your main cohort. Yeah, so so I'm, if you define a main cohort uh, by where the biggest revenue is coming yes. from, that's the big enterprise companies like HP and so forth. Okay. And and on average, what are those enterprises paying you per year for Clockify? Well, it's it's typically hundreds of thousands of dollars. So oh, okay. So what is a hundred thousand bucks a fair average? Uh it's it's more than that. So I, I can't really go into specifics of that. But well, I don't yeah. want to talk about any specific customers, but I want to yeah. understand if it's a hundred yeah. grand or nine hundred grand, right? I mean, generally speaking. It can it can be it can be nine hundred grand. We have that and the or it can be 150 grand. We also well, have What is that. the average? That's why I don't want to go down every customer car because we don't have time. The average in the enterprise is what? Is it 200, 300, I'm 400? Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't disclose that information. Why That's can't you disclose of- an average in your enterprise cohort? We're not talking about any specific customer. Well, typically I'm, I'm not communicating that uh, data. So I uh, I mean, typically I know what I can say and what, what I cannot. So, uh, so this is unfortunately one of the things that, that I cannot give you the exact number. I'm not okay. You've already told me though it's between 100 and, and and 900, right? So I mean, I'm asking you for a little bit more specificity around that. You've already shared the basics. Why would you not share the average? Well, like I said, I just have a I, I just have a list of things that that I know that I can say, and uh, some other things that I'm not. I'm oh, are not you? So are you working prepared. for? Are you working for somebody? Is this not your company? Well, it's my company. I'm I'm 100 owner of the company. Okay. Minus well, listen, I'll just, the, uh, I'll just do my best to ask questions without knowing what kind of that ever that, that, that cohort is. So tell us more about the backstory here. when did you launch the company? What year? So it was, uh, I guess the real launch was August, 2017. And we started building it in, uh, March. So let's say, yeah, it took us four months to uh, release the initial version. So I would say that August, 2017 is the birthday when we actually, uh, Posted the product on Product Hunt. Okay, and what's your team size today? How many folks on the product? Well, in on Clockify, there's around seventy people now. Seven zero. Yeah. And yeah. what's the breakdown? How many are engineers? 
Uh, around half, so around 30 something people are engineering. Okay. That can be quality assurance or front end. And yeah. do you have, do, are the price points, it sounds like if you have an enterprise price point, you have some sort of sales motion built. Do you have kind of the SDR to AE to CS rep kind of system built out or no? Well, we don't, we don't get that many uh, uh, inquiries for the enterprise edition. So uh, typically if that goes through our support team, I'm the one who's going to be uh, doing all the sales. So, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much the, uh, uh, the only the only person that someone will discuss uh, enterprise uh, deals with. So okay, well, just because then with that in mind, uh, you can't be processing a ton of hundred thousand dollar plus ACV accounts. Those all require touch, and if you're the only guy handling them, you have a limit to how many you can handle per month. Well, well uh, I, like I said, I mean, I maybe do one call a week. That 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 can be considered a qualified lead an enterprise so, uh, an enterprise level lead yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so yeah typical on average it's one call a week that i that i do that i demo the product and uh, show it to people that are actually considering investing into uh on-premise time tracking solution and so since 2017 what you've closed a couple a handful of those two three four something like that well we typically close one enterprise account a month so you're having five calls and you're closing one of those. So you have a 20% close rate on a demo of a hundred thousand dollar plus well, level. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, say that because we get a lot of inquiries that go to our support email and sales email. So I would say that one out of the hundred comes to uh, talk to me. Right. So, uh, so no, it's not, it's not that closure rate. That's only no, no. what I discussed. I'm only, I asked you who's doing the enterprise sales and you said you are the only person that do the enterprise sales. Is that accurate? So how it works is that someone emails our uh, email that it's on the website. It goes to our support team. That is also a sales team at the same time, but in email manner. Right. So they, dis- they typically disclose uh, uh, starting points, starting figures and, uh, typically, people just don't go, move forward to that. And then, if they do, uh, and if if they're comfortable uh, about talking ab- about these kind of uh, digits that require us, uh, that can actually uh, make it viable for us to uh, spend that much time on one account, that's what comes to me. And typically, that's only uh, that's only one one call a week. And those are so. enterprise. Those that's your enterprise cohort, big a hundred thousand dollar plus ACVs. Typically, yeah. 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 So that that was back to my point. If you're doing one of those calls per week, how how and I said you have closed, you said you've closed one of those per month. If you're doing five a month and you're closing one a month, that's a twenty percent close rate on your enterprise cohort. Is that accurate? Well, if if we look at that part of the funnel, and I'm pretty much the last part of the funnel, that would be correct. But we can't observe it in that way because there's a lot more leads. That, you know, that don't you're qualify. misunderstanding me, yeah. Nanon. I'm only yeah. talking about your qualified leads for enterprise. I, I don't care about everything that hits support. I don't care about the thousands of leads that hit your support that don't turn into anything. I'm talking about the qualified enterprise leads, which said you're the only one handling those and you're handling one, one a week, so five a month. And I'm just asking, are you, cl- you said you're closing one of those a month out of the five. That would be a 20% close rate on your enterprise qualified leads. Well, if you if you like to observe it from that part of the funnel, I guess that would be uh, yes. Well, do your enterprise leads go anywhere else except to your desk? Uh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, if you close the deal, it's it's going to go to engineering and it's going to go to the account. No, 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 no. I mean, before up to closing the deal, you are the only guy close. You don't have a inbound sales team focused on enterprise accounts where there's a base plus commission and an SDR to an AE to a CS rep. No, we do not have that. Yeah, so it's you. You're the guy. You're the you're the, you're the you're the rainmaker. Well, I, I'm sure we could we could improve uh, if someone better would be doing that. But uh, at the moment, it's only me, and it's and it's doing quite good. I mean, we have a really really good value in the free tier, and that attracts a lot of users. That's so, that nineteen dollar uh, so per month plan. No, no, we also we also have a plan that is uh, that is absolutely free and you can sign up as many users as you want. So, uh, talk me through that. Uh, right. So that's your top of funnel. How are people, how are people finding you in the first place? 
So if you type time tracking, we're going to be first in Google. So if you type time tracker, we're going to be first in Google. So, so with that position in Google, it's very easy for us to get the top of the So I just type time tracking into Google and skipping over the ad results, I see time tracking.co, toggle.com, Zapier, and then Clockify in the number four spot. And you're saying that number four spot drives you a lot of traffic. Well, uh, typically it's a first spot. So I guess it's, it, it's, I guess it's bit different when you're looking from that location where you are sure, now. Sure, yeah, I'm in the U.S. But, yeah, but on average, our position is 1.2 or something like that. So, Got it, but that's driving uh, most so, of you organic. Yeah, that's, I mean, we spend zero dollars on advertising and uh, yeah, that's most of our traffic and most of our uh, top of the funnel leads are coming from search engines. It's, you know, it's impressive. I mean, it's impressive. Your Alexa ranking is, is really high as well. 9,700 uh, traffic rank in the US. Uh, your little widget under your sign up button says 48,310 people signed up last month. Those are free people using the, the tool. Yeah. yeah. Now that, that's really great. So how have you, I mean, there's, there's some lessons built in there, right? So how have you been able to rank so well from an SEO perspective? Is this like a, something you're really good at? No, I mean, we, if you if you actually do the SEO analysis of us, you, you will you will conclude that Google is actually telling the truth that that the content is the most important thing, and it's not that we have a, a great content in terms of that we have some sort of articles. It's just that we provide a really high value for the service and for the product. Yeah, there's a lot. No, 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 no. I don't. Sorry, yeah. no, no. I don't believe that, and I'll tell you why. There's a lot of companies that have the um, the most amazing product, but no one knows about them, so it doesn't matter. So they have to create great content, great SEO, great mouse traps to get people to view the product, and then it snowballs. So I don't believe it that you just you have the best product and magically everything else fell into place. You did things tactically to make sure you had top of funnel. <laughs> Well, that's a good assumption, but uh, it's not It's not that. So the thing is, if you do the analysis of the market of time tracking products, you actually make a conclusion that our product in the free edition gives the biggest value. I mean, uh, it's, it's literally a $10 a workspace and you can sign up 1,000 people. So if you're a company with 100 employees... You, you can get a time tracking with additional features for 10 bucks a month. Yeah, no, no, you understand so, I'm agreeing with you, right? I am agreeing with you that you have the most valuable. I'm, I'm saying I'm going to take you at your word. You have the most valuable free product. I'm not arguing with that. What I'm arguing is you can have the most valuable free product and still nobody finds you. You have done tactical things to make sure people find you like this SEO ranking. And what I'm asking, why are you rolling your eyes when I say that? People don't, you rank number three for a reason. I know it sounds impossible and crazy, but we actually only have one person uh, doing the SEO. And like I said, if you do the analysis, if you actually use one of those tools to count our backlinks and so forth, like all these things that people are focusing on, you're going to see that we're, we kind of suck at that. So, uh, so it's, I don't know what Google likes about us, but I would assume that it's a big number of people coming, signing up and coming back again. So, okay, so got that's it. my assumption. Got it. That, that's fair enough. You're saying it's not an SEO play. It's just Google recognizing that people keep coming back to the site over and over and that lots of people are signing up every month and, and they're factoring they, that into their page rank. They have some sort of mechanism. I mean, if you click on the result and uh, if half a second later you click back, they're going to know about that. Right? Yeah, so yeah, they, don't yeah. need to, they, don't, they don't need to take your data from your browser. They're going to know about that. Yeah. So I'm sh- I, I think it's connected to that because we don't have backlinks. We don't have, we don't have PR. You're actually the first guy who ever got in touch with us to give us some sort of coverage. That means so I'm that job, means I'm pretty smart because you're you're building something pretty special, right? Well, it is, but like I said, no one uh, no one is covering it in terms of like there's no big outlet that actually made a coverage about us. Who who, who cares about press? They, they cover they cover shit companies usually anyway that have raised a bunch of capital that are burning cash and the and the founders are broke. You're doing it the right way, right? That's why I wanted to have you on. Well, thank you. If yeah, I mean, have you ra- we, well, hold yeah, on, we actually, hold on, hold on. Have you raised capital, or are you bootstrapped? We bootstrapped. I love it. See, I knew I was going to like you a lot. This is perfect. So bootstrapped. Um, how have you? W- when you launched the company back in 2017, how did you fund the original or the original growth? Was that from uh, the Coang kind of other agency revenue? Yeah. So let me tell you. So in the in the consulting uh, industry, you don't have a project always. Maybe some companies will always have a project, but sometimes it happens that you some people on the bench, right? And at that time, we had uh, I had eight engineers on the bench, 
and I just didn't know what to do uh, with them. And I was like, oh, let's build a time tracker. So, uh, <laughs> so, so we launched the product after four months uh, of work with eight engineers. And the initial version is quite, was quite useful, actually. So uh, it, it was buggy, of course, and we didn't have any paid plans, but it was useful enough for us and a lot of our colleagues as well. And that's how it came into existence. And, and how many total, so over the past three years, right, since 2017 to today, how many total customers are you now serving? So, uh, okay, so if we're talking about the monthly active users, uh, we have in the cloud, we have around 600,000. Okay, now are those all, are those all paid or are those free and paid? No, most of them are not paid. And uh, when it comes to the paid customers, we have uh, it's 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 in tens of thousands, but but uh, active users are a lot bigger. So uh, okay, can can you share when you say tens of thousands? I mean, can you share more specifically? You're talking like forty thousand or fifty thousand? No, I'm sorry, I cannot. I can only say that it's. In thousands. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll just basically take that, right? I'll take the kind of the worst case, right? Which is 10,000 people paying. You said that plan is 19 bucks a month. So that puts you at two, about 200,000. That's the average. That's the average. We have 10 and 30 uh, bucks a month. So average is 19. Cool. So again, assuming worst case scenario here, you said tens of thousands. Let's just assume 10,000, which is the minimum, right? At 20 bucks a month, puts you about 200 grand per month right now uh, in revenue. Is that generally accurate? Well, yeah, it's you, it's a, it's it's good to assume that it's exceeding that. That's good. And then, what does growth rate look like over the past twelve months? Uh, so, if you're at call it north of two hundred today, where were we at exactly a year ago? Do you know? So, when it comes to the revenues, uh, it's not slowing down. I, ever since we started charging for something, uh, our revenues are growing uh, twenty, almost thirty percent month over month. Okay, and it's still like that. So, I'm kind of watching every month and hoping it's not going to slow down and it's still not slowing down. Well, do you remember? So, uh, I can't, I can't do that math in my head that quickly, 20% month over month growth over the past 12 months. So, so I mean, can you help me with that math there? So do you remember what you're doing a year ago? Well, we started charging in April, 2018. So, Oh, okay. So April, so that was literally about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask a different question. When you closed out 2018, so that would have been like six or seven months ago. Do you remember what you were, what December, 2018 MRR was? Uh, even if I did remember, I, I, w- I wouldn't be able to tell, tell it publicly like this. Okay. Well, it's no fa- one does that. No it's one fa- gives these kind of informations online. So no, you, I, you haven't listened yeah. to, you haven't listened to the show. I've had almost 3000 people on and almost every single one of them has. So you are just a unique guy, but I like that it's working. Okay. Sorry. So I'm sorry about that. Don't sorry apologize. That. I think it's fine. What I do want to say though, is it's fair to say that over the past 12 months, you've gone from nothing, a bench of eight engineers and burn from nothing to over $200,000 per month in revenue. That's accurate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. How have you, where did you decide to put the paywall up and the free plan to convert? You know, you have 42,000 people signing up each month for free. How do you know where to start charging? So, uh, so what we did, uh, was actually pretty fair in my opinion. So everything that we started with that was free and that started attracting users, everything is still free. And in April, 2017, we added a bunch of new features that we said, okay, this is good. This is the stuff that we're going to charge. So we're not taking away any, anything that used to be free. So here's some new stuff. And if you want them, you pay us 10 bucks a month. And then uh, a couple of months later, actually around six months later, we added another batch of features that we said, okay, these are the premium features. If you need these, pay us 30 bucks, please, mm-hmm. per, per workspace. So hold on, just to be clear, do you not have any usage-based upselling? It's all feature-based upselling? Exactly. So like I said, even if you have hundreds of... Uh, uh, employees, you're still going to pay 30 bucks a month. Hold on. If I have 10,000 employees and all I need is <clears throat> access to your API apps and integrations, I can get, I can do that at zero on your $0 plan. Yep. Yeah. So the only, re- what I'm asking is the only reason people would go to $10 per month. Let's say now I have still 10,000 people right on my team. I could pay just 30 bucks a month for all 10,000 total to use the tool and they'll get hide pages, alerts, project templates, time for others. So it's 30 bucks. Just to be clear, that's not per seat. That's $30 a month for the entire company of 10,000 people. Exactly. Okay. How do you not lose money on me? 
it costs you more to serve 10,000 active users than $30 a month? Well, uh, maybe the secret is that most of my employees are in Serbia. Uh, no, your cost of goods sold on AWS for serving 10,000 active users Nope. That's maybe if you're serving images like in JPEG or something. But if you're uh, if you're actually time tracking, all these time entries are really small transactions. No, no, no let me ask you a different question. You yeah. said you're processing. You have no options here for $100,000 per year, but you told me you're closing $100,000 per year deals. So what are people buying for $100,000 per year if you're most expensive? Your most expensive plan here is 450 bucks per month. Yeah, but it's self-hosted. So you can take the software, install it on your own server and not worry about that we're going to leak some data or stuff like that. So okay, so those big enterprise ones are where you're doing like basically yeah. on-prem installations. Yep. yep you have yep. no so plans where you're charging per seat or per number of you know users, projects, or reports. We do, but that's the enterprise uh, enterprise. Plan. Well, hold on, so hold the, on. You yeah. say unlimited time tracking users and projects and reports on your free plan. Yep, but in the cloud. So all those plans that you see for 10 and 30 bucks, they're in the cloud. So the enterprise plan is for the on-premise version. So you get the software, you install it on your I server. I see, okay. So a yeah. lot, 80% of your revenue is coming from this, these enter, this enterprise plan where people want you to install it on their server. And in those plans, which I'm not seeing on your website, you do charge per seat, per project, per report, et cetera. Yep, it's only I per see. Use. Yeah. Per user. Okay. That's the key to your success, really. I mean, that's where you're driving most of your revenue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it's a big issue, privacy and, and security and and all these uh, concerns that companies have. They're solving in a way to have the ability to have the control over their data. Yeah. And they're ready to pay for that. Just so just to be clear, and then we'll wrap up here with the famous five, the the, the 10,000, you said tens of thousands, let's just call it 10,000 people using your cloud solution at a $20 ARPU on average at 200 grand per per month. That That's just your cloud solution. You have a whole nother business, which is your enterprise version. Correct. Okay. Got it. Very cool. And you said that enterprise version makes up 80% of your total revenue. Yes. Which means it's at least four times as big as 200 grand per month. Yep. Okay. Got it. So you basically have a, at minimum, an $800,000 per month business on your enterprise side, in addition to your $200,000 per month cloud side. Sorry, I, I didn't follow that exactly. So uh, you said so, that uh, yeah. you said that only your cloud, re- I'll walk through this very clearly. You said that 80% of your total revenue is your on-prem solution. It's not on the cloud. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. You said you said that of your cloud solution, you have tens of thousands of people using it at about $19 per month, which is a, assuming a minimum of 10,000 users. That's $200,000 per month on your cloud solution. Is that right? Yep. In order for your your installed version, not the cloud version, to be at least 80% of your revenue, that has to be at least four times your cloud revenue, which is 200 grand per month, right? So four times 200 is $800,000 per month on your installed on their server. And that's where I'm, that's where I'm getting the numbers from. Yep. So that would mean all, that, that would mean all together, the business is doing at least a million dollars per month. Well, yeah, we could say that. Okay. I just want to make sure they're generally accurate. I don't want to make you look too big or too small. Okay. No problem. Okay, the on-prem installation, is that one time or is it recurring? It's recurring. It is recurring. Yeah, so I mean, look, this is a great business. You should, you should, you should have, be, be more happy to talk about it. That's great. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm very happy that, uh, that everything's transformed in terms of business. And uh, I'm super excited that, we're, that we came from, from really casual start to something super serious in terms of that amount of data that that we help companies handle and uh, and some big names that I actually grew up uh, grew up using their products when I was a kid you know and now I'm serving them through a very simple app so, that's, I love it how, how many of the on-prem installations have you facilitated over the past call it year well uh, I, I think I, I don't know the exact number but we're we're closing to uh, we're going to, we're going to get to, to, to our 30 at big customers soon. Yeah. Okay. 30. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes it so, so 30 of the kind of on-prem ones. And again, you're harvesting all of those leads from your massive top of funnel free user sign up because of the value of your free plan. 
Well, yeah, that's that's the assumption. I mean, a lot of these folks, they actually, uh, uh, it's, there's always a funny story about someone using the free version and then uh, recommending it to their company. And uh, yeah, that's that's typically how the upgrade happens. It goes all the way to the enterprise. I love it. It makes a lot of sense. All right, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh well, I, I wouldn't say business book, but let's say that the nonfiction would be the rich dad, poor dad. I like that. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, I read a lot about Elon Musk. And do you own, his, do you, do you own the flamethrower? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company besides your own? Trello. Number four, how many hours of sleep you get every night? Uh as much as I need, let's say eight hours. Okay. And what's your situation in non married single kids? I'm sorry. I cannot disclose that. <laughs> you can't disclose if you're married or not. No, I cannot. Sorry about that. That's so funny. All right. Not, uh, we will just say no answer there. Uh, yeah, I just, I just don't want to talk about private life. Sorry about no, that. No, no, that, that, that's that. fine. That's fine. Um, talk to me about, um, how old you are. I'm 33. 33. Okay, last question. Take us back to your 20-year-old self. What do you wish that he knew? Oh, my God. That's a tough question. At least everything I know today. No, that's a that's a cop-out. Some, something, okay. something tactical. You can take your time. Uh, what would that be? Yeah, if I knew uh, that consulting is not really a scalable business model that would save me a lot of a lot of time and 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 nerves <laughs> guys consulting doesn't scale clockify.me a big surprise here right they're doing they have tens of thousands of paying customers on their cloud solution doing paying about $19 per month so $200,000 per month in revenue there then they have about 30 enterprise accounts where they actually because for privacy reasons install their software on that company's local servers those are north of $100,000 ACV accounts so the company altogether doing more than a million dollars per month today in revenue they have a great free engine 42,000 new free signups every single month. Uh, really valuable free tool gives them really good ranking on Google, which has driven most of their growth. Team of 70 people totally bootstrapped, which I love. Nanan, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you for having me.